You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 80. It's Dent Supply Serona versus Track Research. Who's doing the research on the materials you're using with your patients? Are clinicians becoming researchers for these larger companies? This week, John and I discuss this topic concerning a debate between two companies, one that researches and one that provides product. We also discussed John's recent trip to Spear Education and how his orthodontist responded. And then I can't wait to tell you the product of the week because it really did change my practice. It's all coming up this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Nashville in 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com now to sign up. That's RestorativeDrivenImplants.com. Well, I want to tell you about an interesting product, and it's uh, it's one that we have seen now. It's kind of new, but if you are a CAD CAM user, Wes, and you uh, are, are dealing with day-to-day with all your blocks, it's real hassle trying to keep track of all of your blocks that you're milling with. And Zerk has come out with a really nice product. It's called the CAD CAM Block Locker. Wes, let's talk about this. I mean, what what do you what do you think about this? What does it do for so people? So when I go out to my garage, okay, and I have to go through a tool chest that's not organized, that's a problem. But yeah. when I can go to my actual chest, you know, you've you've seen it. The snap-on tool chest where you can right. pull out a drawer, pull out an area that was designed for yeah. the product that right. you need. That's what block Where the 10-millimeter socket fits right in the 10-millimeter slot. That's what right. this is all about. That's what this is you all know, about. You so can, if you're a Cerec user or you're milling, yeah. okay, using CAD CAM blocks, right. okay? But even this, if you're using the pl- program mill you know, yeah. really any kind of any kind of CAD CAM milling. Right. This is it for you because this is the tool chest that will keep you organized. And the, I love their slogan because time is everything because I don't have mm-hmm. time to go find the right block, the right color to put in the mill. I need to go right to the block locker. Right. If you, it, Yeah, if you're doing CAD CAM, Time is everything. You know, you need to have a workflow. Yep. A lot of times this is staff you're delegating this to. So give the staff, the, and I'll tell you, you give this, you put this in the hands of an excellent assistant who loves organization. You oh watch my. her use the online labeling that they can get. You can you can, uh, you can can hold hundreds of blocks in these things. They have a small and a large. Mm-hmm. They have seven different, several different colors. I was going to say, of course it's color coordinated with Zerk. You yeah, know? Of course, it's Zerk. Yeah. It's got to be, right? And, yeah. and you can you can set this in your lab and have access immediately to any shade, any color ingot, all the different translucencies. Yep. And, and, and you know, you can have it completely organized. This is going to speed up your whole process, and it just looks cool, Wes. Well, I mean, let me just Zerk say right now. It makes things that look cool and work at the same time. What you need to do right now, this is on your Christmas list. Right now, you just yeah. need to go ahead, control block chaos, and head over to Zerk.com and purchase the block locker and mention the dental guys. And yep. uh, we really tell appreciate them, them Zerk. That, uh, we sent you. I really appreciate Zerk and their, their help in sponsoring the show so we can bring you great quality products like this. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. John, an exciting week uh, for you this week. Um, yeah. Particularly, I'm in the woods, okay? I'm right. in the woods hunting, hunting <laughs> with deer. my bow and arrow. <laughs> hunting deer. Hey, hunting buddy. Some deer. Hunting some deer. Not yep. teeth today, buddy. We're pulling teeth. Right. No, we're not pulling teeth. We're hunting deer. That's okay? Right. So I get this text from John. I can't respond because it was very sketchy service where I was at. It was like, dude, 
we got to get our team out here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, where were you at and what were you doing? Yeah, so I was out <clears throat> in a place we're starting to become very familiar with, right, out in uh, Arizona at Spear. And, you know, I know if you're listening to this, you probably think, man, these guys, <laughs> like, they're probably like, Spear's just paying them to go out to this thing. No, this, is, this. This, this was actually my study club. We went out to, as a group, not everybody, but a good number, five of us or six, six of us, went out to the Spear Airway Prosthodontics Seminar. Now, Wes and I, if you've been listening to the show, you know that Wes and I went to the Sleep Medicine and the Dental Practice Workshop, and that's before they split it out into Airway Prosthodontics and the Sleep Medicine Workshop. So we kind of got a, a lot of this already. But this is Jeff Rouse, and we... Uh, you know, this is kind of his premier seminar. He teaches both, uh, both days of it. So it's just him, which is kind of rare in the Spear ecosystem, you know, for one person. Yeah, I didn't know that. So he does it by himself. Yeah. It's just him for, for the entire wow. time. And, uh, 16 and, hours of lecture. Yeah. It's pretty intense, man. And he goes, you know, the whole time. And as you would kind of expect, you know, he, um, he's talking about, um, well, I mean, he pretty much goes through from the start to the finish about why we should be concerned about airway and his journey, all the things. He kind of jokes about the fact that, you know, he, he feels everything is really an airway problem, you know, and at first it sounds kind of funny. And then as you start listening to a lot of the, the cases that he makes for this, um, it's very convincing. And uh, it's very uh, mind bending, definitely, when you start to really get into it. And of course, he he's lived. I won't ruin it all. I really hope some that you know. If you don't know Jeff's story personally, you should go check it out because he has a very personal connection to this, not only with his family but also with himself. And he's he's gone through treatment uh, for some airway issues. And I'll leave it at that because you can check out his story. But so the the cool thing about this, I, I had already heard a lot of this stuff, you know. So for me, it was a it was a great review. There were some new things for sure, uh, always new things, but. Uh, I, I had heard a lot of it, but who hadn't heard a lot of it was my orthodontist, my main orthodontist. Cool. I have an orthodontist I work with um, that, that understands airway, but, he, but he's a, wi a ways away from me. And uh, the one that I work with mo most, who's very talented, knows a lot about adult ortho, knows a lot about the, the spear way of doing things. We meet at his office for the study club. So he's, he's committed to, to, to being you know on top of his game, but he admitted himself, you know, I just haven't really dove in with both feet into airway and how that affects my practice. And anybody that's involved with this knows that, you know, the, the orthodontist may be the most important person really in terms of the team of, of kind of understanding what's really going on with growth development, blah, blah, blah. And interestingly enough, from what we understand, the hardest person to get on board with this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Orthodontists uh, for, and that's a whole other show topic, you know, but there's a lot of, concerns I think that orthodontists have about what their role is and, and whether they're causing problems by not dealing with their way and how do they need to deal with it. I think every, you know, most of them want to help their patients, but it's a huge paradigm shift for them to start to think about their treatment very differently when it, how it affects people's breathing. And so you took your so, orthodontist yeah, and was there any other specialist with you at the, at yeah, we had a periodontist also, which was cool because okay. some of the stuff that uh, Jeff talks about is some surgical treatment for uh, moving teeth, surgically facilitated orthodontics, which we talked a little bit with uh, uh, Becca Bacow at uh, Spear Summit, which that'll be released uh, upcoming. Um, so that was cool because the periodontist was there to talk with the orthodontist about what I consider to be one of the things I really want to incorporate more into my practice is you know, combination of, you know, more minor up to major surgical interventions for patients to, as Jeff would say, to actually resolve their mm -hmm. airway problem rather than just to control their mm -hmm. airway problem. And so, you know, you're, you're going through the first day and Jeff's just building a case for why we should care about this and why it matters. And basically, you know, just talking about what his journey was, you know, with, with airway. And, you know, you start to kind of see, you know, people start nodding their head, you know, and they start to kind of go, yeah, I'm, I'm understanding where you're coming from. 
but there there came a point where we started show where he started really because he's dropping literature through the whole thing which of course one of the things we love about out there is that they're they're constantly quoting studies and literature and the, we all anybody who's interested in airway knows literature is not perfect because it's just so much that's being done right now where they're really learning about interventions and how much can it help. But there's a lot of literature that's out there. And he just starts showing case after case of what, say, for instance, early orthodontic expansion can do uh, to, to the airway and how it may be able to resolve very early on what um, kids may deal with through their entire life uh, of problems with not only their occlusion, um, their malocclusion, but also with uh, with their behavior, things like that, and you know their their life, and you just start to see. So the first night we go out to dinner, you know, and and I'm just watching my orthodontist just because I'm just kind of hanging back. I'm trying not to like because of course I, I want to like about this. Like I want to hammer him. I want to be like, dude, you know, this is crazy. You know, what do you think? And but I'm just letting him. I'm watching him just process it. He didn't even say a whole lot that first night. Like he talked a little bit about it. He's just like, man, I'm not really. This is just a lot. So the second day, though, he goes through a lot of cases, and I think that's what really brought it home to him because he starts right. seeing cases, start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. How did this affect the patient's sleep uh, study? How did this affect their behavior? How did this affect what their end result was? Blah blah blah. And so that second night we go back out to dinner and, you know, I'm just, I'm sitting right next to him and, and he just, he just kind of starts talking. He's kind of like, it kind of blew his mind. And I ended up on the plane back with him. He and I were traveling together. We were the only two on the plane together. The rest of the group was on different flights. And, you know, we just had this, we had a layover for like two hours in Charlotte airport and we're sitting there at bad daddy's burgers and we're just talking about this thing and, and and he's just like man he's like this kind of changes everything you know he's like this mm. changes the way that i i see these patients and he's like you know i'm not really exactly sure yet what i'm gonna do but i know that i'm gonna have to change a lot of things about my practice and and he just kind of said man you know i i feel al-, he said i feel almost like bad that i didn't know this some of this stuff uh, I, cause you know, he goes, man, I just feel like I, I've been behind in this and now I'm seeing this and he's like, there's so many things that are just making sense. So now, I mean, it that's... just, it's crazy to watch somebody go through that. Cause we've went, we had gone through that you and I, when we started mm-hmm. taking this stuff, you go through this kind of revelation that there's some things that you've been missing. And I just, you know, I just had a patient today, you know, who comes in new patient eight o'clock and he's classic. Classic airway patient, anterior wear, without posterior wear, pathway wear. He comes in specifically because he's grinding his teeth. He knows he's grinding his teeth. He knows he needs to do something. He's 43 years old. And he just starts talking about his sleep. He works third shift. You know, he has horrible fragmented sleep. He knows that. And I start, and he goes, man, because he goes, the last dentist they saw, is like, they gave me a night guard. He's like, I just cannot wear it. He's like, I feel like I'm choking when I put it in. So I put it, I take it out. Now, five years ago, five years ago, Wes, I would have been like, man, you know, yeah, I guess you just can't tolerate a night guard. I guess maybe we'll try a lower, you know? <laughs> and now I'm like, you know, let me tell you something here. I feel pretty confident in telling you, I know what in the world's going on. So yeah. it was crazy to watch that happen first person. And so now that's my spirit as well, though. You know, they yeah. do a good job creating awareness mm-hmm. in the doctor's clinical exam because mm-hmm. they, they build a case and then they start presenting cases. Yep. And that the case building that they do, like you said, just to repeat a little bit about what you were talking about, the case building involves so much clinical research that it's almost hard to combat what they're saying. Interesting thing about Jeff and what he did with Greg is he practiced in Seattle mm-hmm. for a couple of years before yeah. you even heard about um, what he was doing and really refined his protocols there and in Houston, <clears throat> from what I understand, yeah. in Texas, um, to be able to come on to the Spear faculty and start bringing this to clinicians. There's yeah. nowhere else 
right now that is teaching this to specialists at this level. Right. So and comprehensively. So we, we've, we've talked to them about that. We've talked to the people at SPEAR that kind of help set the curriculum, and they know that there's a need um, mm -hmm. to teach specialists. Um, and I think that um, they're aware of that. And what happens in the future, I don't know who's going to be that person. We know there's a problem. The American Dental Association recognizes there's a problem with educating uh, dentists about this issue of um, uh, dental-related um, signs of sleep-related uh, sleep related breathing disorders or uh, you know, even sleep apnea. So funny thing is, though, is that the way we diagnose patients is changing in medicine, too, because Gimeno right. at Stanford has really done some things. I know you sent some things to me that we knew, you know, and mm -hmm. that he, Gimeno there, has really worked hard at bucking the medical system because, right. and he's a pediatric sleep physician. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's well, re well, well spoken and well, mm, uh, well published. Uh, well published. And so I think for you, John, this is a good thing because you have one of the key people now that mm -hmm. is at least challenging what they're doing. Yep. And, and so that's what you have to do is you have to get people on your team or the people that you're working with to buy in per right. se, right. to to this new methodology of treatment planning and just recognizing. You don't have to know everything about it. You just have to recognize it. Like Jeff said this in one of our interviews with him. I'll never forget him saying this. He said, you know what? He said, we have not done a good job teaching rural dentists <clears throat> how to mm. recognize sleep-related breathing disorders in children. And he said, it just takes a few little things and you can't unsee it. And so, um, and then they can refer that out to somebody yep. that yep. is able to take care of them. And so, yep. I, yeah, I, I, well, it was, a, it was pretty awesome to see it in action and, you know, great seminar. <clears throat> There's a reason why it's, you know, one of their highly, uh, you know, sought after courses. And of course they've got a workshop that comes from that where you can learn the entire protocol. So pretty awesome time. <clears throat> and of course, not a bad time to be out in Scottsdale. It was beautiful. 76 degrees during the day. It's like the, probably the nicest I've ever been out there. You know, you normally mm. we out, we get out there. It's like, they're not letting planes take off cause it's 127 like that one time. So yeah, nice time to be out there. And, and also too, I think I mentioned this to you in a text, but just happened to go up and what into the restorative design oh. workshop. And oh Bob Winter has got 3D televisions now set up and he's given the students 3D glasses so they can watch his preps in 3D while they're doing their prep. You know, just stuff <laughs> like that. Just super cool. <laughs> just super cool. That's so awesome, anyway, man. so it was a great meeting and you know, but but I'm I'm really excited about today's show, Wes. Before we get into kind of the main topic, though, let's just pause just a moment for a message from one of our sponsors, Heritage Investors. This is Justin Goodbrand. and here is today's tip. The first week of December is the perfect time of year to do a SWOT analysis on your business. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. This assessment covers what transpired this last calendar year, letting you know where your successes and failures are. That way, as you go into January and you begin to update your business plan, you know what adjustments need to be made. For more information about today's topic and other dental-related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak to a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Gibra is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor. Visit heritageinvestor.com or financiallysimple.com for additional information. So Wes, uh, I, I think that we really maybe owe somebody an apology. A little bit. That's how I'm going to maybe start this part of the show because you know we sometimes are are kind of quick to to get upset when we see maybe some things we don't agree with. And this show, like the the main part of the show, I think we need to really 
give some respect to to an organization. And I and I want to maybe just start by saying, you know, this this cl- clinicians report, man, been around a long time. Long time. You know? Track research. Yeah, track research been around a long time and just this last month, and of course this is we're recording this in November, so it's November November issue. Mm-hmm. They published a long-term uh, track research, which is their kind of research arm, which Rella Christensen is kind of in charge of. Mm-hmm. They published the results of really all of their long-term research on different ceramic materials. They published reports on success rates and fracture rates and uh, different strengths, things like that, um, and flexural strengths, all these things. And, you know, one of the things that came out of that was how good zirconia has been, especially the original Bruxer, just how good that's been. Some mm-hmm. other things that came out of it were about how the newer translucent zirconias were maybe not as good as as what mm-hmm. we'd like them to be in terms of strength, but still good, still good. Uh, how good Emacs is also came out of that. But the thing that really stuck out, like a sore thumb, and I encourage you to read this, don't you know, don't pirate it, go buy it. You know, you really, we really need to support as much as we can any organizations that are, that are trying to, to do good, you know, third-party research. And I'll tell you, this was what stuck out. Yeah. So, so before you say that, yeah. you know, track research receives yeah. no outside funding of right. any type, industry, government, money, favors for, for the work that they did in this particular uh, research project. This allows them to be totally independent and report all results. Yeah, and it's and and here's the interesting thing too is that it's peer reviewed. So this is peer reviewed by a large team of clinicians, yep. actual clinicians who weigh in on every word as they say here. I'm, I'm I'm quoting, punctuation and picture and debate hotly. They say before it's even published. Yeah, and so. The first time that I was kind of exposed to um, CRA and Gordon Christensen was a, a very young clinician in, in dental school and, and then in residency, and, and I subscribed to CRA for a long time and really set, bought some things based on their opinions and based on some of Gordon's lectures. And the first time that I really got to know a little bit more about Rella Christensen was some inf- some stuff that I was doing with Brad, the dental lab guy, and he knew Rella uh, from some research that he had been doing for his own dental lab work and had worked mm-hmm. with her mm-hmm. on some findings that he had had concerning whatever. And he had mentioned how yep. reputable she was to work with. And, um, you know, like John and I said, I think that we were sometimes quick to maybe discount um, maybe what's going on. Because yeah, we don't and, always agree with everything that they say. And and that's okay. You know, we don't have to agree with everything. Um, and they don't have to agree with everything we say. It's just, it's an opinion. And that's what we're offering here on the show is an, uh, is an op, op, opinion here. And so, yep. um, but this is interesting, especially coming off the last episode with Dennis Tarnow, where he talked a little bit about, go back and listen to him talk about how Nobel BioCare Mm. Um, didn't really listen, and Strawman did. Right, right. And Strawman made corrections, Nobel didn't, and Nobel didn't do it in a professional way. Strawman did it in a professional way. And so, yep. John, what are we talking about here? Because we're talking about a, a product that was released to clinicians by mm-hmm. the largest dental company in the world, Dent Supply Serona, Celtra Duo, okay, mm-hmm. which at one time you and I looked at it and said, this is interesting. And there was a guy in Nashville, <clears throat> sure. actually, that was presenting on it, if you remember, John, and we were like, hmm, we should consider to look at this right. as maybe a budding product for milling. And Brad, the dental lab guy, said, yeah, wait, guys. Right. Wait he just did. a minute. Yeah, he did. He said, it's, it's just brand new. And mm-hmm. the whole thing was Celtra Duo, that got, I think, people, especially CEREC people, interested, mm-hmm. was <clears throat> it was claimed that you did not have to post-fire it. <clears throat> so you could mill it, and without uh, any kind of centering or heating or firing mm-hmm. in the oven, they would they claimed that for uh, average situations, 
it was uh, it was good enough. It was it was good. It was very good. And they were, of course, advertising it as an alternative or a competitor directly to Emacs. They the kind of said this is the Emacs killer is some mm -hmm. of the words that I heard going around <clears throat> by right. the Sarek people. And they said it's faster than Emacs. It's not quite as hard on the machine as Emacs. And you don't have to worry about uh, putting it in the oven. And it's good. And so CRA, uh, Clinicians Report, they published this. And they said it has a 26% fracture rate, 26% failure rate. And if you look at all the other products that they tested, it was either no or very low failure rate, nothing more than what you would expect. In fact, the Bruxer had basically 0% uh, failure rate, and that was over a lot of years. But Seltra only over you know a couple of years, 26% failure. And you know that that's high. That's very, very high. That is a big red flag to anybody that would hear that. And it's really the first time that I have seen anything published about Seltra. Now, there are other, I'm sure that anybody that's listening to this could go to PubMed and find some, you know, some small studies that are probably paid for by Dent Supply that um, people have been doing Seltra and had some success, you know. And nobody from Clinician's Report is saying that those studies aren't valid. They're just reporting their results. But the thing that really got to us. Yeah. Dense Supply fires off a letter. And what I love about this and we'll is put I this love... up on um, on the screen right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you can take a look at it for yourself. Yep. And you should check um, it out because it's this is the letter that's sent. And we'll put a link in the description below to the actual download and all that kind of stuff. But you can pause the video if you're watching on YouTube and read it. Yeah. Because they they pretty much Essentially, yeah, we're not going to just read it to you, but a couple of the things I will read that uh, they they said track research has released. This is Dent Supply saying this track research has released the results of a non peer reviewed observational study in which they reported the presence of cracks in Celtra Duo crowns placed polished only not fired in the posterior after one year. They observed 11 crowns under SEM with micro cracks of at least six millimeters when the material was not properly polished or fired as demonstrated in those SEM images. The observers report this phenomenon as a 26% failure rate without considering the other contributing factors such as impact of surface roughness, prep design, material thickness, and cementation. Moreover, the observers fail to consider that standard clinical practice defines failed restorations as one that has broken cusps, breaks, or where the restoration can no longer function. Um, so they essentially, I mean, clearly are calling into question the materials and methods and sort of the legitimacy of this entire quote unquote research, as they would say. They would say, this isn't real research. It's not peer reviewed. Now, I would agree with them if you talk technically, yes, it's not published in a journal, a peer reviewed well, journal. Well, they even say that in. Uh in the response letter, uh, CRA yeah. track research yeah, track research publishes. I mean, a Rella responded. Rella Christian responded, and we'll put that up on the screen right now, yep. and you can look at that. And Rella responds, and she says that over the past forty-two years, we have been quote unquote, and she says capital letters peer reviewed by a large team of actual clinicians. Yeah. And they never intend CRA um, to be a journal or even claim that. Right. Um, basically, it was designed to be a brief summary of results and conclusions generated during clinical testing of commercial products by real dental clinicians in actual treatment of their patients. And basically, they want to reduce complications is what CRA does. Yeah, I mean, they're all about clinical success, as they always said, is the ultimate mm -hmm. test. And But I, I thought I was very interesting to see how they rebutted this because she pretty much goes back and says, let me just tell you how we designed this. And, and, I, and I love this, you know, that she says, we showed what was happening clinically to the inventor and company administrators in the summer of 2017. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Summer 
of 2017. Right. It's they November showed November of 2018, John. Yeah, they showed them clinical images, dyes, SEM images. The company people said they learned a lot. We noticed product directions were altered accordingly. However, these important people <laughs> did not accept our warning that Celter Duo was not an alternative to IPS Emacs and certainly not to any brand of Zirconia as far as durability was concerned. We recommended that the product needed improvement. That was in summer 2017. And then they say, you know, we, we learned early on to work with companies. They say they generate the directions. They select the labs. And we stipulate only that the lab must be a true commercial lab and not an in-house company lab. They provide the products. And the, the dentists who fabricated the crowns have many years of experience with the hardware. Um, they have experience using many different materials. They know what they are doing, is what she says, you know. And, and I don't doubt that. I mean, if, if, uh, if you want to have any credibility at all, you got to worry. And most dentists who care, most dentists who care about this, uh, would would jump at the chance, right, to be included in a, a CR type of publication, you know, and and so she pretty much just says, you know what, like screw you guys, like you're gonna send this letter saying essentially like just that we're we don't know what we're doing, and she says we told you in 2017 this was a problem, and now just now you're gonna say that like almost like act as if you've never heard of this before, right. And what is what a shame, you know, because what it brings us back to, I mean, we could go on and on about it, but must respect, much respect first to to track research and yeah. clinicians report. We've definitely given them some grief over the last couple of years because there's been some stuff we haven't agreed on. But, you know, they really did. Uh, uh, this proves their integrity to me beyond a doubt because they're willing to stand up to the biggest dental company in the world now. And say, you know, uh, we actually did it right, and you guys did it wrong, and we've told you, and we're willing to to pretty much just say you guys are you guys are are ignoring what we're trying to tell you, and you're trying to almost to kind of cover it up to make it sound like we just don't know what we're doing. But I think the biggest issue here, Wes, yeah, I mean, what does this mean right. about who is doing? the research, quote unquote, on these products. I mean, think so, about a couple you know, years John, ago, think, Lava yeah, Ultimate, right? Similar situation. 3M puts yeah. this product out on the market. They said it was resilient. It was strong, resilient. It had, they had, I remember they had a little spring on it. Like it could just take whatever you would put on it because it had some springiness. And then they start breaking. Mm. And 3M takes it off the market. And who, I mean, are we the guinea pigs, Wes, for products? Well, the other day I was noticing somebody posted on Facebook that they were trying a new product and they wanted to know, you know, what people thought about it. And it's so new. It's not been researched yet. It's just been released and FDA approved. That does not mean, you know, that it's ready for prime time, that it's just right. FDA approved. We know that. Um, the interesting thing is, is that you have to decide in your practice if you're going to uh, be a researcher and practice research dentistry on your patients without informing them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to rely on clinicians in university settings, in uh, maybe not even in university settings, maybe you're going to rely on just peer-reviewed clinicians that have been doing it for 42 years Yep. and, and look at what they say before moving forward? Or are you going to listen to somebody that has wisdom like Brad the Dental Lab guy that says, hey, wait, guys, it's new. I'm not so sure about it. We need to wait. So, you know, another particular products that we've seen, other particular products like Lava Ultimate <clears throat> over the years from 3M, thought it was going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. You notice that that, that product is, was a failure. You know, it's not, not the greatest thing since sliced bread. We thought it'd be something. Other products have came out. I remember whenever the first, some of the first glass on them are cements mm. that, whenever they were exposed to the moisture of the mouth, yeah. that they expanded. 
Mm-hmm. And guess what happened to your restorations? Um, they exploded. <laughs> yep. And they talk yep. about that as like one of the biggest failures in all of dentistry was that cement. And again, we as a dental community continue to see companies, small companies, be gobbled up by larger companies. And John, you and I mentioned this actually about the Dent Supply Serona merger years ago. And we had a little conversation on our show about how, is it a good thing? And we kind of just talked a little bit about what could be good and what could be bad. And I think that when the company is smaller, they're more agile. They're more apt to change because it doesn't take so much of like, okay, so instance, if a company is like an elephant, and you have a little gnat at the bottom of the elephant pinching mm. or biting on the elephant's toe. Is the elephant going to change or move? No. Right. They're right. not. Because that's not what makes the elephant move. It takes a big force to do that. And so, unfortunately, yeah. the bigger that a company gets sometimes, you know, things are to me, aren't as innovative. Well, but I uh, guess I, I, you know, innovation, I, I completely agree. I think that's one of the problems. But I guess I think, all right, well, even if you're not going to innovate as much, you know, even if you don't respond to the market as much, when you come out with a product, I guess as a big company, I expect more. Because, you, I, because I think, you know, if you're a small company, you don't have the resources to test everything maybe that you wish you could, you I, know, I think you don't right have now. the money always to publish a ton of research. You don't have the, the, the resources to do all the testing. You maybe have to rely on somebody else to do your testing for you, you know, but if you are dense fly, don't you tell me that you don't have the ability to test your products out. Don't you tell me that you can't publish research that, you know, don't you tell me that, and especially that you would, you know, respond in this way, you know, and just kind of be dismissive. And I think that, you know, yes, these bigger companies, one of the problems is that the innovation gets stifled sometimes because of the bureaucracy. But it seems like, you know, is this just the expectation is that the clinician is going to be the, the tester? And we've seen it before with, uh, with companies. And again, 3M, unfortunately, has had some of those, those things happen. Uh, but they've they've also had some really great products, you know, and they've had some things mm-hmm. that have been tested extremely well. Um, and I think Dent Supply is the same way. They've had some great have some great products. They have some things that are amazing and have been tested very well. But I think that uh, it, there's this issue with a lot of companies, a lot of companies where we are really testing. And I guess it just comes back to a lot of the things we've talked about so many times that you know don't be the first to try something. Uh, don't be the first, don't be the last, you know, to, to try something. If it's, if it's been proven, don't don't be afraid to change, right? but don't think that just because it's new and somebody's had a little success with it, that it's, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's it, you know? Yeah. I think that again, you have to surround yourself. It's so much, it's funny to me because We as dentists, most of us are in a private practice. We don't talk to clinicians outside of our private practice very much. Yeah. There's not many of us that are truly honest with what we see clinically. Let's just be honest about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not honest about our own dentistry and how it's performing. And so if we are practicing inside, like you've said, John, before, a chamber that echoes right back our own experiences, then, well, that's very dangerous for one right. that you only hear your success and your failures and you only, and you can close your eyes and close your ears to those things because, well, you're inside your own world. Right. And so I guess what this means is that we need more collaboration amongst mm-hmm. dentists. We need more companies like track research Unfortunately, right. companies like this, again, they they don't take funding from industry, government, uh, those type you know situations. So they rely on us as right. clinicians to support them by subscribing. 
And I and I, and think, I think that I think too that you know if you're looking, this is one of the reasons why, you know, when we look at what maybe we were worried about in going forward is that there's just not a lot of um, of those places that you can go. Right. Um, you know, really, you have to at this point uh, comb through the research on your own mm-hmm. in journals, and you know that's one of the reasons why we kind of have had the show, you know, it's not, Mm -hmm. it's not the main focus of the show, but you know, we try to, we try to boil down some of the real important things that are going on that could change, you know, how you practice and try to help you guys and girls decide what should you be using and and why. And, you know, it's, it's of course, we don't know, you know, the thing I guess we always, we always want more feedback on, you know, from our listeners is, you know, how much of that do you want? Because it's, it's really interesting. You know, there's, where do you go as a dentist to figure out what kind of composite you need to buy? Where do you go to find out what crown you should be putting in on a premolar or a molar? Or how do you choose a cement for that crown? And how do you know if it's going to work? Who's testing gloves? to see if they actually protect your hands, you know? I mean, yeah. or, or do you just go into the catalog and just buy whatever's on sale? And I think most of us don't want to do that. Most of us don't want to buy what's on sale. We want a consumer reports, you know, for dentistry, someplace that you can go and you can see, you know, 100,000 people report on how many repairs they had on their car, and that way there's one of the data we that gets put show. together. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's, it's not out there. Because, you know... Some of our, you know, hobbies, let's just put it that way, and our geekery revolves around, uh, you know, listening to tech and reading about tech. Um, right. John and, I and just reviews of, about things in general. Yeah, exactly. My mom has always been like, man, you just like read about like random research about stuff. Right. You know, and like, you know, my, my brother-in-law <laughs> texts me. I was in the tree stand on Sunday morning. He's like, Hey, I'm looking at a new laptop for my sister. My brother-in-law is asking me, he was like, what do you think about, you know, this particular brand with this particular Ram or this particular processor? And he asked me about Optane memory and I actually had an answer for him. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Spouted out what Optane was and all that. Of course I have that answer, but I'm, I'm well read. Okay. On that subject. But as dentist, are you well read or do you just go to the catalog or you ask right. your assistant or your ordering person to just say, Hey, you shop it out, talk to all right. the people, find out what they're using and then just buy whatever they're using. And then I'm going to try out whatever I like that works best in my hands right. and then use it. Now, and I mean, and, and are you, and then is, are you going to make, because there's a real, cost to this of what if you pick the product that has 26 percent failure like seltra duo you know what if what if you're a serac user i mean just i just put myself in the serac users and i'm like if i I, switched everything two years ago to seltra duo man and i and i'm reading this right now i'm really worried i'm i'm like oh my goodness because if i had 26 percent failures of my ceramics on my crowns that my lab sent me uh this would be like I would move, <laughs> you know. Is, <laughs> I would be like, "Yeah, I'm, your best uh, success be... is moving away from yeah. your practice, <laughs> right? Geographic success. I would I would leave it all behind and say yep. those twenty six percent of crown they'll never find me to redo them. I'm going moving to Canada, you know. So I'm I just, just don't twenty six percent. So, but are you choosing a composite so, that has twenty six percent failure? Are you choosing a, you know, uh, wh- whatever? Pick pick your thing. I mean, is your disinfectant work? You know, I mean, all these things that we talk about, how do you know? And, and we're not saying, we know that there's only a certain amount of time that you have. But again, this is your career, man. Like, this is your job. You know, they, we have to be experts at this stuff. And we hear so much, all this stuff, all this stuff about business, running a business, running a business, running a business. We're not saying that's not important. It's important. It's super important. In fact, it's critical. But if you don't even know why you're using... Like your lab's like, yeah, we got this new, it's called Pecton. Pecton. We got Pecton. We got, it's yeah, pe- we asked Darren, pe- we asked Darren pe- about, 
pecked Pick on, and he Pick was like, peak. well... Yeah. He was like, it's an interesting product, right. and we're looking into it. Right. You so, know? so your lab goes, or somebody puts on Facebook, they're like, man, we're using this. It's available now. It's amazing. Best thing ever. You need to do all of your full arch implant restorations with this material starting now. So you start doing it. You have no idea. You are doing research, whether you know it or not. You are doing research, because if those start failing, guess what's going to happen? You're going to call your lab. It broke. You're going to call the lab. The lab's going to call the company. The company's going to say, oh, that's interesting. And they're going to do nothing about it. Somebody's going to have to pay for it until there's been enough of it. Then the company is going to decide whether or not it's worth recalling it. It's the same thing p that car companies do. You know, you know, we, I remember years ago learning about this, that mm -hmm. car companies weigh the cost of a recall mm -hmm. because they know if they recall it, there's a certain amount of money they're going to have to pay. It's a crazy amount. But if they don't recall it, there's a certain number of lawsuits that people are going to file against them, and they're weighing out the money. I guarantee mm -hmm. you these companies weigh out the money of like, do we take it. something off the market or do we just deal with the problem? And if the labs start coming to us, we just start giving them free stuff or we just do something else. Uh, listen, That's crazy it's, it's that almost, we're doing the research like, for these people. It's almost like an end-of-the-year rant here, okay? Because <laughs> what in the world? Are we trying to do here? Are you as I mean, I'm getting a little, a little upset because <laughs> the thing I'm trying to contain myself today. The thing is, you are working on people, right? You know, patients, right, right. People like, and you're like, I'm going to try this today. What? Yep. You're going to try this? Yeah. No, I don't want to try it on my patients without right. informing them. Okay, right. now like, if like I in medicine, inform. that would be like you you get sued for that. Right. You know, oh, or they but, have to but John, sign up. We're not or dealing with heart transplants and stents and stuff. People aren't gonna die from a broken crown. Yeah. You know? But it's yeah, but, but that's it's no different. I'll replace man. it if it breaks, you know. What? Yeah. It's, it's no just, it's, Yeah, it, it's it's careless. It's careless. Yeah. It is careless and you are being you are being you being used is what is what's going on. Yeah, you gotta and, you gotta be be aware of what's going on when you see things like this, and then you see how the company responds. Because to me, the measure of this is is really comes back to how the hey, company listen, responded. If you've used Seltra Duo and you listen to this show, you need to talk to us. Yeah, I want to know tell what us what you're. I, tell I us what you're know seeing. What you see. Like, are yeah. you seeing a problem, or do you know people that are using this, and you're brave enough to say, "Hey, here's my Seltra Duo." Throw it up on our comments section. I'd like yeah. to see some. Yeah, we'd love and, to and, see what's going on, or even just send us I mean, a private are you, message. Are you are you seeing fractures, right? Are you seeing craze lines show up? You know, what are you seeing right now? Have you been placing yeah. it for more than a year, and you're like, eh? You know, are you? Uh, how about this? Because of this controversy, are you going to stop using Seltra Duo? Are you just going to go start back to Emacs? Are you going to go over and use? zirconium you get it you know whatever the most proven one of the most proven products ever to <clears> exist <throat> is zirconia mm. you know and and lithium disilicate you know what are you going to do now are you going to change yeah. the way does this change you i think it changes people to be honest yeah. with you i think, I think it does this kind and of i think that we have people. to be as dentists we have to be vocal about this and and tell our wow. Companies and our reps that we're not we're not happy with this. You know, don't think that we won't tag Dent Supply in this podcast because we will. And if you're oh, listening yeah. to it and you sold Seltra Duo, well, we have a lot of reps that listen to this. Yeah, and you sold Seltra Duo. Are you going to sell it now as much? Yeah. I, what are you going to say when somebody's like, what "So are you going is to Seltra say? Duo okay, or should I go back to Emacs? Are you going to tell them it's fine?" I would love to talk to you, or I would love to just chat. Yeah, send us a chat. private message and tell us what you yeah. think about this, you know, because we've got some friends that are reps at Dent Supply. Yep. And uh, I guarantee you I'll be asking about, mm -hmm. you know, what what are your what are your takes on this now uh, yeah. that we have this come out? You know, what do you what would you put in your mouth? It's interesting that's always, that that's, Dent Supply in the past has quoted CRA as a marketing tool. Right. And so, you know, so is other companies. Right. So and does so, this start a feud? You know, there's these funny feuds that go on, you know, just the whole thing with... Uh, you know how what was it? Ivaclar didn't get invited to Serona World, <laughs> even though, yes. even though like ninety nine percent of people that's all they're Are using. Max, yeah. I mean, what a what a total just joke, man! Like it's just silly. It's silly. It's, silly. it's 
It, I mean, not, these are it's not great for the patient products, great companies. It's it's again, it's yeah, it's not about the patient in the end. Um, so it, you know, but but then uh, then again, we also we also want you know again we want a call for more third party. I agree. You know, reviews. We want to call for more boiling down of what research is clinically, uh, you know, uh, appropriate and relevant. And we hope that, you know, our listeners that, you know, hear us rant about this kind of stuff, that they do they do start asking their reps these tough questions yeah. and demanding more from our companies because we feel that it's up to us to demand more from our companies or else they will just drive the ship. And in the end, <clears throat> yeah, they'll come out with some great products, but they'll also come out with some horrible ones and you won't know until somebody else tells you uh, that you shouldn't have tried it. So Let me anyway, just tell you right now, one last thing. If you cave to materials that are weaker, um, that are, and I'm all about building things stronger, but if you cave to materials that are, in a, in, you know, not superior or not, you know, that are just fair, because they're cheaper or because they require less time, mm-hmm. whatever that is, because it requires less labor. If you cave to that to save a buck in labor cost or material cost, there are some materials that are cheaper that work great. Mm-hmm. But if that's your main goal, you know what the company's main goal, in my opinion, is, is that they're looking at insurance reimbursement and they're thinking, oh, it is not great for these dentists. They have to worry about insurance reimbursement. So we're going to come out with a cheaper, more, less labor intensive <clears throat> product so yep. that it helps to lower their bottom dime. And I agree, that's what has to be done. But should that be what's, should be, should, should corporate companies and corporate insurance companies drive what care your patients get or should it be your demands Right. And you as a clinician saying, this is what we want, and we think it could be done like this. You see, CRA and Track Research is a group of clinicians saying, we think that this is for the betterment of the patient and the clinician. And, right. and Dent Supply is saying, no, you guys aren't peer-reviewed, and we're, we're, you, we've done our test, and here's our guys. Right, and, and we're we just going to disregard it. And we're just going to disregard it. So rather I, than and I would together, just say a good way... A good way to handle this, in my opinion, is not only to talk to your rep, but post on social media. You know, oh, yeah. I, I think you should, if, if you're a Seltra Duo user, especially, because I'm not just saying just, you know, start posting random stuff on f- social media just to troll a company. But if you're a no. Seltra Duo user, I would okay, ask questions. I think you should be, and you're seeing problems, and the company is not dealing with it. Again, I'm not saying just go out there and start bad mouthing a company. But if you've used the product and you've had problems and they are not addressing the problem, they're just saying, no, it's you. They're saying it's you. Okay. You have enough, I think, research now behind you to be able to say, hey, let's let's make a little noise. You know, let's get on social mm-hmm. media and, and let's just post on Dentsply's Facebook page yeah. and say, hey, here, here's a picture of a failure. Like, what's going on here? 26% failure rate. Maybe like at least let's get a response from the company. Right. On something or like your this. rep, you know. Right, uh, bring it to your rep. I think it's worthwhile to to hold our our again our our, our companies have a responsible. Let's forum about this. Let's figure this out. Yeah, and, and hopefully what? the company responds in a positive way, and they say, you know, guys, we're interested in making things better, so we want to make things better. Because because Wes and I, of course, we don't want to we don't want to like alienate the companies. We want them to be partners with us. So if we feel like they're going to respond and they're going to, you know come in and try to fix problems and be positive the same way that, again, I just look at the auto industry as a good example of this. You know, how do they handle a recall? Do they come mm. out and do they, do they, you know, come up and just gut up and say, we're going to do whatever we got to do to make this right? The same way that you and I, in our practice, if we have a problem with a patient, make it right for that patient. You know, if the company is going to do the same thing, man, that's who I want to partner with. That's who I want that's my right. people to be that's who I'm going to pay even I would pay more money for a company's product that that's willing to stand behind it but if they're going to throw you under the bus no way man listen let me tell you right now we the dental guys will always not be afraid to call out you know this is the last thing we're going to say about this to call out any 
anybody that's ever sponsored us to, you know, to anybody that we've ever talked about in the past, any product, we will eat <clears throat> our own words and we will bring yeah. you unbiased opinions about this. And, and companies know that and they respect that. And I think right. they do, at least companies that we're wanting to be associated with. So that yeah, being said, absolutely. let's, let's talk, talk about let's, let's totally change the subject. Let's take it. Yeah, because John, the other day, okay, I'm doing some transitional bonding, which, hey man, game changer when you learn <laughs> yeah. how to do transitional bonding it is huge unbelievable what it's doing for yeah. my practice if you don't know how to treat the worn dentition one of the best ways to do it is to do transitional bonding and so one of the things about transitional bonding is you're using some type of a matrix to um to apply composite in a on a bunch of teeth and cure it all at one time, okay? Now, we're not gonna get into the specifics about that, but what you want in this particular situation is to take your hybrid composite and make it super duper flowable. Mm -hmm. And one of the techniques that we know that allows us to do that is to, um, is to heat or warm your composite. Now, I, I, I know now that I should never buy anything and John should never buy anything without first consulting one another. Right. <laughs> so, so here I am doing my own research and looking for composite warmers of all types. Now at the point in time, I'm using water. You know, I'm putting right. my composite ampules in bags and putting it in hot water chairside, you know? And so I'm tired of doing that. And so I'm looking at composite warmers, I'm like, man, 400 bucks, 350 bucks mm -hmm, for a composite mm -hmm. warmer. I mean, it looks cool. And Penny, my, my ordering lady's like, gosh, you know, yep. <laughs> that's crazy. So I'm like, maybe John's got an idea. Maybe he's found something less expensive that works just as well. Yeah. That's this week's so product I, of the I, week, and, I, John. and we just had never talked about this. Product right? of we the week, We just hadn't man. talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Wes asked me, you know, what would you just Product and kinda, tip. He was just kind of complaining about the, the cost of these things, you know? And, I, and so this is the product of the week. The product of the week is a coffee mug warmer <laughs> from Amazon. <laughs> whoa, okay? whoa, whoa. Put it up on yeah. the screen right now. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we'll put, put a picture of this thing up, okay? Yeah. And, and so a coffee mug warmer, for those of you who have not seen one, it basically just looks like a little pad that's like the size of a coffee mug, okay? Mm. And it has uh, just a warming pad, and you just plug it into the wall, you turn it on, and it heats up. It keeps your coffee, tea warm, whatever. And, uh, so John, are you drinking so, coffee tea side now, or chair side? Yeah, so now you're if you want to drink your like coffee working while you're doing you're your composite. Coffee, that's <laughs> yeah, so you can warm your composite or your coffee, whichever you prefer. <laughs> so... I, I did a little, I, 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 as, as you would expect, Wes, you know, I did a little research on these and I bought like four of them. Okay. Oh four different ones from so this Amazon. This is CRA John Rogers This is style. right. This is, this is the track research John Rogers style. So I, I got four of them because I wanted to see the, the differences. And <laughs> what I settled on is, and, and, and I don't know, there's plenty of these on Amazon. They probably, they're probably all made by the same company. But the one I, I settled on was one by Vobega, V-O-B-A-G-A. Nice. And it has, the reason I liked it is because it has three settings. Mm. It has a low, medium, and high. And I like the low because the low is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. So it's not ridiculously hot. You can set it up to 149 degrees. That's the hottest setting. But what I That's found if is- you're drinking if you, coffee. Right. If you're drinking coffee, it's great. But if you want your composite, the problem was is that it was heating it up too fast and it was becoming almost too, I don't know, I was a little worried that it was going to be too flowable or it was going to well, melt something. And your patients love the smell of composite in the morning. Right, they? exactly, exactly. Now the problem, okay, so the, the other ones that I got, a couple of them had automatic shutoffs. But what you have to watch out for is a lot of these, they are actually like weight, uh, uh, they, they have a weight sensor or something, some kind of inductive idea almost maybe on some of them. Interesting. So they will turn off if you take a mug off of them. Okay. Yeah, safety so, feature. Right. So then the question is, I, I tried actually getting a coffee mug and putting my composite compules in the coffee mug just so it would turn it on. 
But the problem was is that you have to remember to take the mug off of the warmer or else it never turns off. Hmm. The one that I liked that had the three temperature settings, it does not have an automatic off. So the solution was I bought some really cheap plug timers. They're little like they're by Belkin and they just have three settings. There's like a two hour, four hour, six hour. What they are is they're designed for charging phones. Like if you were going to charge a USB, but they have a plug. So essentially, and I, so I don't mean like a plug timer with like one of those dials that dings at the end, you know, but mm -hmm. it, it just has a little LED and you just hit on and it will stay on for six hours or eight hours or two hours, whatever you want. You just hit the button once for two hours, once for four, one for six or something like that. So what we do is our first composite of the day, my assistants go in a little bit before that when they're setting up the room, they turn it on, put it on. Mm -hmm. It's on the lowest setting. We put the compules out before I, uh, or basically when I come in the room to do anesthesia or whatever, because it only takes about uh, five minutes or less for these things to be ready to roll. But I found that even if I leave them sitting there for like a long time, like an hour, two hours, maybe we're doing composite and I don't, you know, it's at the end of a long procedure or something. And it's still like the perfect consistency for me at that temperature. If it was at the higher temperature, if I left it on there for longer than about 10, 15 minutes, it would just get kind of nasty and kind of weird. It would even look like it was kind of separating a little bit in some of the mm. composites. So I, I would recommend that you look for one that has a, a low temperature setting um, and one that, you know, you might or might not have an auto shut off, but the one only one I could find that had that real good selectable temperature setting I just had, you, you know, I paid like five or six bucks for one of these plug timer things. For, so I, I put one in every room and they're $20, $20 for the mug warmer, five, six bucks for the plug timer thing. So the whole thing is $25 investment and it gives you just a really nice, and, it, and because it's kind of this little pad, it's perfect because you can just lay the compules in there on this little pad. They stay put, it has a little lip on it, you know, so they don't fall off. You just put it out of the way. And you can, you know, it works to me because I've used, I've tried like at composite courses. I've tried the really nice composite warmers where you can actually put your gun in with the compule mm -hmm. on it. And those are cool. I mean, super cool. Love them. But I would say that it's not any different to me, except that, yeah, you can't put your gun on there, but I don't really care about that. It's, you know, it takes one second to load the compule in and mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to heat as many as you want which you can on some of the professional ones too, but you know, you're paying, like you say, what, 400 bucks, 300 bucks. So this is definitely something that I would say very simple, very effective, you know, and you can heat your coffee up chair side if and you John, need it. John, we're super excited that you shared this because <laughs> you just saved me like $325. Yes. Good. You know? Yeah. So and it's not really a company that will ever know that room. we've talked about it. They're just going to see this. After the show, there's going to be a rush on Vobega coffee mug warmers bye, with bye. three adjustable temperatures. So if you go on Amazon in the next 10 minutes, if you just if the show just released, you might be yeah. able to find these still with yeah. prime shipping. But Otherwise good luck after that, man. Because <laughs> they're going to go fast after out. this. Yeah. Oh, man. So they'll see a little bump in sales. They'll be like, buy who's these? buying these buy things, buy man? Things. It's like all these crazy dentists. That's funny. So, yeah, well, That's I'll funny. tell you. Stuff like that, I know it seems like a stupid thing, but it makes a huge difference, as as, as we know, in the mechanical mm. properties of the recomposite, in the setting time of your composite, speeds up the curing time, and most importantly, as Wes says, makes it easier to adapt it into things like a matrix or into for transitional bonding. Right. I mean, just Class in two deep, composites, you know, yeah, just in a deep box. Deep and you, box know, you know you're going to get a more depth of cure, better adapt, better adaptiveness to uh, to the prep. For sure. Mm -hmm. So potentially mm -hmm. better margins. Anyway, I think anybody, everybody that knows anything about composite knows that warming, it makes sense. Well, Wes, I'll tell you, this has been kind of a, it's been an this interesting awesome. show because we've gone a, really across the board for totally different things, all of yeah. which have been kind of fun to talk about. Yeah. Season and four, man. Dental guys. Yeah, we're bringing it. Two man. episodes in, we're, we're bringing, bringing it. it. And we bring want it. you to give us some feedback on the show. You know, we've talked about several things we want feedback on. Uh, tell us what you're using to warm your composite with. We'd love to know if this is something <laughs> that makes sense to you. Uh, right. Tell us, uh, you know, what kind of coffee you're drinking on your new mug warmer. You know, we'd love mm. to know about that. We'll critique it for yeah. you and tell Maybe you if you should change Yergashev or switch. Right now, yeah, but... of course, Yergashev. He's always mm. got something going. And uh, 
We'd love to know what you think about the Seltra Duo articles. You know, what you think about Chemex. I love it. Wes has always got all the stuff. Uh, but, you know, tell us what you think about Seltra Duo. What Are you using it? Are you having problems with it? Give us some feedback on that. Tell us your thoughts on this whole question of who's doing the clinical research in our practices and how you choose your products and how can we make that better? How can the dental guys help you to make those decisions better? If that's something you want more of from our show, we want to know that because we're really... Uh, trying to figure out what exactly is the best way to kind of, you know, down the road to, to really adapt our show into the needs of our listeners even more, provide more and better content for you. And most importantly, if you like what you're hearing, if you think it's providing value, if, there, if you learned something today, if it's helping your practice to be better, if it's helping your clinical dentistry to be better, uh, if, it's, if you just had fun with us today, give us a review. It's super important. It's what to helps other people to discover us. Uh, give us a five-star review on, on Apple Podcasts or uh, any of your podcast, uh, uh, Stitcher, or things like that. Anywhere, wherever you found us, uh, let, let us know that uh, we're doing a good job. And tell your friends about what we're doing. Uh, tell people that you, uh, you think might be interested about the show because that's really, in the end, how we grow uh, and how we get better. And give us some love on, on social media so that we know you're listening. We love to uh, you know, entertain any questions that you might have. Uh, once again, this has been, it's kind of still crazy, Wes, that it's season four. Uh, it's been a great ride and it continues to be a great ride. So we hope you keep riding along with us here on The Dental Guys. <laughs>